Hello everybody, I can see the sun outside and I know spring's coming, so I decided to paint a bunny on some barn wood today and I wanted to bring you along. So first I'm gonna sketch out my bunny on the piece of wood. And if you have a canvas, you can do the same thing or another piece of wood or a piece of plywood. It's always best to do it, especially if it's wood because it's a little too hard to go back where canvas may be a little bit more forgiving. So first I'm gonna grab my white and I'm gonna start by painting the base of the bunny. So I'm gonna start with the ears and I'm following what I sketched out. I know it's hard to see the pencil from here, but I'm just following those ears, leaving a little bit of room at top, at the top, because I always like to leave a little bit of wiggle room for myself, just in case I need to go back or I need to extend the ears a little bit to match with the rest of the body. And same with the rest of the body. I usually start out smaller and then go back. So I have switched here to a thicker brush because I'm moving to the body and it's just will cover more space easier. And I'm using about two different sizes of brushes. And um, the barn wood, if you're painting on barn wood, it's a little bit harder to get into the grooves because of the natural ridges in there. Um, but that's okay, because once we come back with the second step, we'll be able to fill those in. So just get this painted, um, the whole body first. This is all just a plain white. And while it's wet, we're gonna bring in the second step. So I'm gonna bring the body all the way down, almost all the way down to the bottom, but leave about an inch because I think that I wanna do grass here and maybe a couple flowers because it is spring, but we'll just see as it goes. So once your body is painted, you can grab your two colors of green. And if you want to go over to my blog post at samdesignsshop.com, and see the blog post. I'll have it listed in the description to bring you right there, and it'll have all the different colors and everything that I've used. Um, but I am using a lighter beige color. I don't know the exact name, but it's a folk art, and you don't have to use this exact one, but if you wanna see those colors, I'll have those listed as well. So I am just starting with the ears, and the second color is br basically bringing out the whole bunny and giving him character and dimension. So as you can see, I started with the ears, but I'm going with the same beige, mixing in a little bit of the dark brown I used as well, just bringing out that body and filling it in a little bit. And I'm gonna come back with my white thicker brush and I'm gonna do a tail. You can't really see it until I bring in the second color here. And I'm just kind of making a messy line, a little bit of a rough line, not a perfect circle, just to give him that bushy tail feel. And obviously this is gonna be the back of him. And he's so cute that tail just makes it. So I'm just coming back around, making sure that I've got a smudged enough edge for the rabbit. And then once you're done with that, he's cute the way he is. So you can leave it like this or you can add grass. And of course I need to add a little color. And I'm gonna be using two different colors of green. So I've got my lighter green, I believe this one's citrus, and then I've got a darker one. And I'm gonna start with the darker. and. This is pretty simple. You can draw out the lines if you want to give you an idea where it's gonna go, but these are not gonna be straight up and down lines. I'm gonna crisscross them just to make it look like grass. And you're not gonna be able to tell the darker as much until you bring in that lighter green. So as you can see, I'm going over with the lighter green and it's really accentuating the grass. So once that's finished, of course, I always need a little color in my life. So I'm gonna grab the pink and pink's always my go-to but I do have pink and purple on hand because it just screams spring. So same with the grass, I am using a lighter pink and a darker pink. So um, keep in mind that with any colors that you're buying or any brand, just to grab a couple different pinks. Um, and then if you wanna let this completely dry and then draw out your tulips before you paint them, that's fine. But I'm just freehanding it over while it's still wet. And um, I've got my pink ones painted on either side as if the bunny is sitting in the grass. And then I'm going to come back with my purple and I'm gonna use the same two colors. I don't remember the names offhand, but just a lighter one and a darker purple. And same thing, if you wanna have this bunny dried first before you start painting the tulips where you wanna draw it out first, that's fine if you're not quite comfortable with the flowers, you can do that too. So, Either, either process is fine, but I'm just gonna do a couple on either side. And as you can see, mine are not matched perfectly on both sides. Again, it's very imperfect, but that's okay. And 
so just follow that same rule as you go that you can just go the same rule that I do is perfectly imperfect and it'll just be fine. So once it's fully dry, now this part you have to have it dry before you get the twine around. So I'm gonna have it fully dry and then I'm just tying a piece of twine around the middle of it. This is where you can just tie a simple bow. I put a little bit of glue on that middle of the ribbon so it stay in place. And if you wanna tie a little gift tag to it and give it as a gift, this is the place to do it. Or you can just put a little hook on the back and hang it on your wall or set it up by on your buffet table or something. So I hope you like it and there'll be a lot more. So make sure you subscribe because I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.